Shear and moment diagrams by parts are going to be solved using superposition. Superposition is breaking up loads into individual parts and analyzing each part and then summing them together as a whole. We did this in solids when we were doing uh, normal and shear stresses in combined loads. There are two steps for solving shear and moment diagrams by parts or by superposition. First is to lock the beam at one convenient point or fix the beam at one convenient point to make everything a cantilever. All reactions that are not locked are now loads. And now that we've got it locked, all the reactions are turned into loads we're going to draw an individual moment diagram for each load. So let's talk about our loads and locked ends. We're looking at one load at a time. That's the whole point of superposition. So let's say we have this cantilever here. And we apply a point load P. The moment diagram then, coming back to that fixed end, that locked end, is going to be a straight line with a maximum value of minus P times L. If I have a distributed load W, that means its moment diagram is going to be a second degree curve, second degree, with a maximum value of negative WL squared divided by two. What about an applied moment? The moment diagram, because that moment is causing compression in the bottom, will be a flat moment diagram with magnitude negative m. And if we have a triangular distributed load, its moment is going to come down at a third degree with a maximum value of negative WL squared divided by 6. Here we have a simply supported beam, pin at A, roller at B, and we want to find the moment diagrams using superposition or by parts and we want it to be fixed at A. So if I make A the cantilever N, that means I need to solve for my reaction BY. Summing moments about A, I find that BY is three and a quarter kilonewtons. All right, working from left to right, I've got seven kilonewtons as a point load acting down. So I'm gonna have my straight line here of seven times two, which is 14 kilonewton meters. Then I have my moment of 12 kilonewton meters. So I can do this a couple of different ways. I can draw a second diagram. with a magnitude of 12, or I can overlap the diagram that I already have here, 12, whichever, and then I have my point load BY, it's going to come up here, 3.25 times 8, which gets us to 26 for that magnitude. Let's say we have this beam that is supported with a roller at A, pin at B, and has three point loads. We want to find the moment diagrams using superposition and considering the beam to be cantilevered at B. So that's where I'm going to put my fixed end and where I'm going to make that cantilever. So if I'm fixing it at B, that means I'm actually going to have two cantilevers, one on the right and one on the left, and everything is coming to B. In order to have my reactions turn to forces, I need to find my reaction AY. And summing moments about B, I find that AY is 114.3. AY is a point load, so it's going to be a straight line all the way up to B. 
and its magnitude is 114.3 times 14, so that makes it 1600. And then I have my 500 pounds. It starts over here, eight feet from B. It's acting down, so it's gonna be a straight line down. 500 times eight is 4,000. And then I have my 300 onto the right of B. It is acting down, so it's gonna cause a straight line down here. 300 times eight is 2,400. And there is my moment diagram with superposition for my point loads in my reaction at A. Here we have another beam that's supported with a pin at A and a roller at B. I want to find the moment diagram using superposition and I'm going to cantilever it at C. All the way over here. So you'll see that I already solved the reactions at A and B. Working from left to right, I have 10 kilopounds acting at the far end there. So it's going to be a first degree down here. 10 times 22 is 220. And then I have AY, so that's going to come up here. 15.2 times 16 is 243.2. I'm going to go ahead and put BY in there. Sixty-four point eight. Okay, now I skip the distributed load because we're going to have to do a couple things. First, I want it to come all the way back to C, so I have to add in the negative and then subtract out the positive. So the distributed load starting at A comes down WL squared divided by two, so that's 102.4, and then I need to subtract out the part from B to C. So that's gonna be this little bit right here, 14.4. So if I add all this up, I should end up at zero because C is a free end and does not have any actual moment occurring.